In this video, we explain time phase planning logic, the process supporting MRP, Material Requirements Planning. This video segment was extracted from the Plan Visage Demand Planning, Replenishment and Distribution Application Training Program. Prior to diving into Plan Visage software, it may be wise to understand the time phase or MRP, Material Requirements Planning, logic employed in this application. This process strives to keep supply and demand in balance. Demand consists of forecast generated in the forecasting application. Customer orders are downloaded from the enterprise system together with dependent demand from higher level requirements in the distribution network or from a bill of material. Total demand is a calculated field depending on the user's preference. Buckets or periods can be days, weeks or months. In each period, forecast and customer orders are compared and the greater of the two added to dependent demand resulting in total demand. Supply consists of released purchase, production or in-transit distribution orders. These are also fed from enterprise or homegrown system. Firm planned orders is the override of the system generated planned orders. To balance supply and demand, the solution calculates requirements one planning period at a time. The process begins with on-hand inventory, a figure that should be accurate. Period by period, the solution subtracts demand, adds supply, and if there is a projected shortage either below zero or below safety stock levels, as reflected in the projected on hand, the system calculates a planned order to maintain the supply and demand balance. The buyer planner selects the appropriate replenishment rules he or she wishes to apply. Minimum order quantity or lot size may be dictated by a minimum production run or quantity shipped in a carton. Once the minimum has been satisfied, what are the incremental order multiples? Maximum order quantity may be a limitation of what fits on a pallet or container. Period order quantity is a function of how much we are going to require in the next two or three days, weeks or months. This is generally used to reduce shipping charges or campaign runs in production. Lot for lot is simply that we need 6, make or buy 6, need 15, make or buy 15. Since it is near impossible to keep supply and demand in balance at all times, we may feel more comfortable having a little padding in our planning process. That takes the form of safety stock or safety time. Safety stock is a fixed number, whereas safety time is a dynamic number. With seasonal business, safety stock has the company running out of inventory at the start of the season and leaves you with too much inventory at the end of the season. Safety time compensates for this by looking ahead at the demand pattern. The safety coverage might be a percentage cover of the next two weeks demand coping with the up and down cyclical swings in demand. The lead time in days is to know how far we need to back off planned orders so that they are released in time to satisfy the next potential shortage by due date. Let's step through the time phase planning logic, a process significantly superior to planning with reorder points. Here we have an example item 123. We have 27 units in stock. We replenish using an order quantity of 25. Our lead time is two periods. What are these periods? What do you want them to be? Days, weeks, months? Most companies would plan out a year or more, but we don't have room to show that much detail. The PD is a past due column and also showing beginning on hand balances. Our forecast shows a level rate of demand of 10 per period great for explanation purposes. Using our stock on hand of 27, project the inventory balance in each period going forward. With a forecast of 10 in period 1, our projected inventory drops from 27 to 17. In period 2 with another demand of 10, the projection goes down to 7. In period 3 with an additional demand of 10, we are now negative 3. 
our replenishment logic kicks in. We know that we have an order quantity of 25 and a lead time of two periods. The system now generates a planned order of 25 two weeks prior to our required date and covers the shortage of 3 to give a projected inventory of 22. Continuing this logic shows that we have a need for two additional planned orders in periods 4 and 6 to cover a projected shortages in periods 6 and 8. What happens if our forecast is incorrect? Realistically, the forecast is generated with each data upload into Plan Visage. In this case, we deliberately showed a change to the forecast at a lower rate of demand. Here, a level demand rate of 5 per period. Working through the math, we again start with an on hand of 27 in period 1. We have a demand of 5, taking our projected inventory to 22, and 17 in period 2, and 12 in period 3, 7 in period 4, and 2 in period 5. In period 6, we go negative 3. The system generates a planned order of 25 offset by two periods to period 4 and that takes our projected inventory to 22 in period 6, 17 in period 8 and 12 in period 8. And what happens if our original forecast was too low? Here we see a higher rate of demand of 15 per period. There are now additional planned orders to cope with this increased demand rate. Notice that we have a planned order that is past due and will call for expediting that order. These are important time phase planning concepts to appreciate. Timely replanning is more critical than accurate forecasts. We are aware that the customer does not read the forecast, but forecasts are important. The more accurate the forecast, the less safety inventory you need to invest in. That is why we recommend and use the internationally recognized R forecasting engine in Plan Visage. Replanning should occur each time there is a supply or demand change, and this happens multiple times a day. A responsive Plan Visage solution is a boon to management and their profits. Through regular replanning, if customer orders exceed forecast, planned orders might move to an earlier time frame. If the customer order rate of demand is lower than anticipated, planned orders move to a later time frame or disappear altogether. Here we introduce the concept of safety stock. In period 1, on-hand inventory of 27 is reduced to 17 with a forecast of 10. Projected inventory in period 2 is reduced to 7 and in period 3 we go negative 3. This generates a planned order of 25 in period 1 giving us a projected inventory of 22 in period 3. In period 4 our projection drops to 12 and in period 5 the projected inventory is 2. This is below our safety stock level, so the application generates another planned order of 25 in period 3, taking our balance to 27 in period 5. As we march through time, the projected inventory drops to 17 in period 6, 7 in period 7, and negative 3 in period 8, generating yet another planned order, offset by two periods in period 6 to cover the shortage in period 8, taking the projected inventory to 22. If we need to plan a distribution network, then the time phase planning begins at the outlying distribution center first. In this example, we have two remote DCs fed from a central or hub DC. With each outlying DC, we begin planning by forecasting demand for each center. As we proceed through the netting logic, the application alerts us to potential shortages as we keep supply and demand in balance and generates planned orders for each distribution center. These planned orders at the outlying DCs become dependent demands on the hub DC. The identical logic can be applied to a bill of material when planning components for both an end product and for the spare parts inventory. We'll discuss bill of materials in a few minutes. Here we show a dependent demand that came from a higher level demand. To help simplify the math, we introduce total demand. In each period, we add forecast to dependent demand, giving us a total demand. As we have done previously, we project inventory a period at a time 
based on the opening on-hand inventory, subtracting total demand until we drive inventory negative or below safety stock levels and generate planned orders. Forgetting about the safety stock for a moment, remember when inventory is zero, supply and demand is in balance. If there's no demand, why plan additional inventory? The same rule applies to safety stock. If the projected inventory is equal to the safety stock level, we regard supply and demand as being in balance, only planning replenishment when the projection drops below the safety level. Let's wrap this up with a few more concepts. See customer orders. The rule is, in each period, we compare forecast to customer orders, take the greater of the two, add dependent demand, giving us total demand. In periods 4 and 5, customer orders are greater than forecast. If we have a released production, purchase or in-transit orders into a distribution center, they are scheduled receipts fed to plan visage from your enterprise system. The firm planned order is where a planner or buyer has overridden the computer logic to change a date and or quantity. In this example, we see that the quantity of 20 is different to the lot size or order quantity of 25. Now please fasten your seat belts. We're going on quite a ride and I trust you will keep up. Period 1 starts with a beginning on hand of 27, adds a firm planned order of 20 and subtracts total demand of 13 to give projected inventory balance of 34. The question is, do we need the FBO in period 1? Naturally the answer is no. Pretend for a moment that the firm planned order did not exist, then our inventory balance in period 1 is 27 minus 13 equals 14 and will reduce to 2, 14 minus 12, for period 2 below safety stock level. To support the concept of keeping supply and demand in balance, we generate an action message, reschedule the firm planned order from period 1 to period 2. Period 2 starts with an inventory balance of 34, a total demand of 12, resulting in a projected inventory of 22. Period 3 opens with 22, less a demand of 13 to provide a balance of 9. Period 4 starts with 9, a demand of 13 to give an inventory balance of minus 4. Why have we allocated this projected inventory to show a negative balance? We store this number because we have a scheduled receipt of 25 in period 7 and recommend an action message to reschedule the scheduled receipt from period 7 to 4. In addition, we show an action item to say that we have a negative inventory in period 4. Period 5, with an on hand of minus 4 plus a demand of 15, give us a balance of minus 19. Again, this can be covered by a rescheduled scheduled receipt, but will call for an additional action message to highlight the negative inventory. Period 6 begins with minus 19 in inventory, demand of 12 taking us to a net shortage of 31. We no longer have coverage from that future scheduled receipt, so it's time to recommend a planned order. Under normal circumstances, we would plan for 25, the order quantity, but this will not cover our shortage of 31. In the absence of any other available replenishment logic, we plan for two orders of 25 each, totaling 50 in period 4, with the two-period lead time offset. Our balance goes to 50 minus 31 equal to 19. Period 7 begins with an inventory of 19 less 13 demand plus the scheduled receipt of 25 to project a balance of 31. Period 8 has a starting inventory position of 31, a demand of 12, giving an ending inventory of 19. Here is a summary of action messages mentioned earlier. Reschedule the firm planned order in period 1 to period 2, negative inventory in periods 4 and 5, reschedule the scheduled receipt in period 7 to period 4. We would be remiss in not discussing bill of material or a recipe if you're a food, drug or chemical industry or an end cap in retail. The diagram shows that the replenishment planning begins at the highest level, item A, B and C in this situation. 
if you have identical products such as the green item X in this example it must be planned after all the interim level items have been planned so that we have a valid consolidated dependent demand to correctly calculate the netting logic for item X and derive its valid replenishment planned orders. There is one very important philosophical concept that we should all clearly understand. Plan Visage's replenishment and distribution solution is a demand pull from the ultimate consumer to the raw material level or production facility, the entire supply chain. The alternate strategy is a push strategy where we make merchandise and push it into the marketplace in the hopes that somebody wants to purchase it. In this retail example, we predict demand using all the omni-channel strategies and pertinent information available. Stores are replenished from the distribution centers that in turn are supplied by the National Distribution Center in this example. The DC is replenished from manufacturers, distributors or wholesalers. On the left vertical bar, we see the demand pull from consumer to raw material. On the right, the inventory flow from raw material to the ultimate consumer. The concept is significantly more important than this graphic representation. This notion drives very high levels of customer service with simultaneously drastic reductions in inventory and increased profitability. The goals are getting the right product to the right customer at the right time. This goal results in increased profitable sales, then to achieving very high levels of on-time delivery to customers with minimal inventory investment, implying very high inventory turns, freeing up cash flow to invest elsewhere, high levels of all resources productivity including materials, labor and capacity, and bottom line greater profitability. Thank you for staying with us consuming all this detail. Are you not delighted that Plan Visage's replenishment and distribution application takes care of all these calculations resulting in measurable benefits? The Plan Visage supply chain management software suite consists of Plan Visage demand planner including forecasting replenishment and distribution planning for retail distribution wholesale and manufacturing companies a separate but fully integrated Plan Visage APS advanced planning and scheduling solution for all types of manufacturing operations including discrete process and engineer to order is available with sales and support in North America, Europe and Asia. For more information contact SEM Solutions LLC at www dot sol llc dot com or email info at sem sol llc dot com thank you for watching this time phased or material requirements planning logic video